Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. What you're seeing is I've added two lights from Govi. It's called Govi Flow Pro light bar. These two coming inside of this small box and creates ambient light just like a Philips Hue, but much lower cost and much easier to install. An application is marvelous. I'm not just saying that this is not a promoted product. I'm not paid by the brand. This is not a sponsored video. I love this sort of stuff. And if you know my channel, I've had Philips Hue TVs over the last 10 years. And one of the probably first models, I was uh, happy with it. And then upgraded to 4K and then upgraded that model with the bigger screen. So lately, I sold my TV. You all know by now. But if you have just haven't visited the channel early videos, I have Philips LED strip at the behind of my, under of my, uh, one of my couch. And at the back, I have Philips Hue LED bulb, uh, which is controlled by the version two controller. And also I have a Philips Hue LED strip uh, underneath this VividStorm ALR screen. What you're seeing is a 92 inch project, projection screen. This is an ALR screen. That's why it is not affected. You can see me and also see the picture quality, just like a TV. This is a 4K projector. The magic happens with the camera of the Govi, as you can see here. When I do that, screen will go for the protection. This is the camera. This is what happens. It makes it happen. So right now you're seeing a shadow. That's normal. Sorry about my voice, by the way. This is the shadow of the camera. I'm going to tell you all about this story. Since you have to calculate, this camera captures the picture and then it calculates the colors inside of the screen in general or gaming may be more precise but right now it's in the movie mode it might not be exactly precise like a Philips Hue because of my uh, wrongdoings not perfectly calculating I'm happy after 10 minutes I installed it easily less than 10 minutes but after 10 minutes finally everything kind of like done and I wanted to shoot as fast as possible to show you uh, cabling is not done yet the one thing is for sure, if you're going to apply this to a TV, it's much more easy. The problem with the ultra short throw projector or a big screen like a 100 inch, 120 inch, like ALR screens like this, it's too big for the camera. So I need to pull the camera to myself. That caused that shadow, as you can see, beneath the screen. And I can get away with that shadow. I can really push the camera a little forward, but with that hap when that happens, I probably lose a lower third colors of the screen because it cannot capture 92 inch like this. This is a huge screen, huge screen. So it's normal for the device. For the TV, it's easy. For the project, um, for the monitors like gaming monitors, it's much more easy than you think. But I'm trying the extreme scenario as always, uh, home cinema tech review, right? So I was thinking. To create something like this because with the Philips Hue HDMI setup you need to put something inside the box like an input if I'm connecting my console that's okay if I'm connecting my TV box that's okay but what if I'm playing videos from Amazon Netflix whatever that is inside the projector then I can't get the colors with the Philips Hue HDMI box so that's one of the reasons that I, I was looking for something just like a Philips Hue, but much more easier to apply and also place. So you're going to witness, by the way, in the box opening, but you got two alternatives. Let me just tell you in advance. This is something that you can hang this uh, LED uh, bars. Also, you have also leg. You can put it anywhere you like. With this setup, you can stick it with the 3M stickers behind the TV, behind the monitor, or behind the TV unit, or anywhere. And also you can place them on the ground, just like this. But if you do that, it will also take the light. But since this is an ALR, it's not taking too much of a light above. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to, you know, direct it at the sides. That way it doesn't affect my picture quality. I'm watching like a TV and this room is like, a book readable light setup right now. You can see what you eat. You can clearly casually live in this room without any problem. This is a casual lighting and it also matches the screen that you have. 
I think that's one of the greatest things that you can achieve for a low budget. So if you think the same, you can check out the products. This is not a promoted, sponsored video. I just purchased it with my hard-earned cash and I'm loving gadgets just like you. And by the way, in this video, you're not going to see full installation. I will capture some of the parts of this, um, uh, let's just say, GoWe app. But if you're wondering, it's too easy. Yeah, You just like create an account and go next, 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 and then just take the item. One of the things that impresses me most, impressed me most, was to be able to use the camera from down below because normally in the old generation of this sort of products from Govi, you needed to use the camera up top for a TV or any kind of screen for that matter. But since the applications got easier, I don't have to manually calculate the screen corners. I just need to click down or up. So I choose my camera down below. That's it. I put it on the ultra short throw. And I was finished. I just put some uh, this orange stickers up top because other than the up top I couldn't uh, place it. This is an expensive LR screen. I didn't want it too much and I didn't want to push too much because it doesn't have too much of a sticky stickiness onto it. It um, probably not hurting your TV, not hurting your screen in any way, but it didn't just fit onto this uh, unit. So I just calculated myself. That's, that might be also one of the reasons, but probably the first reason that I'm telling you is more better explanation. This is a too big screen and the camera in the app, it couldn't tell all the screen. It couldn't get it inside of the entire screen in a one place. Although this is a probably fisheye lens, it's difficult to get 92 inch up close like this. So I am happy. I recommend this setup. You can put them behind the speakers because I'm planning that. I will stick these things behind the speakers and I will also use the bars behind the speakers. When I pull down, pull the speakers to myself, I will create a better ambient light like this without ruining my picture quality with the ALR screen Vivid Storm. So this is about my screen. If you're going to use a regular screen, you can't do that. But definitely, if you have an ALR like this, you can clearly create an entire room setup like this. Let me just show you. I can light everywhere. So that's kind of cool. If you think the same, you can watch the rest of the video, box opening, what's the content, what's inside, how easy it is. So the only thing left for me is the cabling and finishing the setup. You'll be probably seeing a couple of shorts and videos in the future. But for now, this is the general look of it. And if you have small kids, you need to hide the cables just like me. And I'm, I'm going to have to do that. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. I'm going to leave you with the box opening content and also from the front how this thing looks. Up to see in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Please do comment, ask questions, ask products, recommend me some products. Maybe I will buy and try them for you. Before your purchase, you'll get at least an idea is it worth it or not. Because I love gadgets. This is my hobby channel. And like I told you again, this is not a paid video. So no promotion, just hard on cash and enthusiasm for electronics. Hope to see in the next video. Bye. Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, we're going to do something different. We're going to install a Govi light bar setup to a projector setup. I'm going to use these two LED RGB uh, remote controlled and also capable with its sensor to capture the light on the screen or a TV. And I'll try to use it behind the VividStorm ALR screen or behind my stereo speakers to create ambient light without ruining the visual quality of my ultra short throw projector and TV setup. So what we have here, Google Assistant, Alexa, and also we got GoWe uh, Smart Home F, and we got Energy Efficiency F, which is not perfect, but I can live with that because these are LED strips. So what do we have? We have your journey begins now card and inside let's connect you need help kind of stuff and also google play and app store app link and we can use and it shows how we calculate normally we all know 
we should be using the sensor up top of the TV unit, but it's going to be difficult for my setup because I have a projector screen and it's going up and down. So it's going to be difficult uh, for that setup. I need to use it in a reverse mode. I will install and share my experience with you because there are lots of reviews out there. So we have sensor, we have setup. They most of the time place back two sides of the uh, TV or the monitor. Let's see what, it, what we have inside. We got uh, box content, the camera setup for a receiver, like sensing the signals. So when I open up the box, what I have, this is the box content part, by the way. So I have two LED units for creating ambient light for me. And I have the connection of type C and a long cable, but still applying at the back of a ultra short throw screen will be near impossible. We got something like this which will probably hold as you can see we got hole here so some sort of extrusion here and i just need to put it on something it could be perfect to fit behind my stereo speakers and with this setup but we have also i believe we have also legs let me just show you the legs these are the legs so these are for behind units and these are for probably, yeah. Yeah, it's easy to stand on really. So we got good legs, we, we got silicone based feet. So it's going to keep the uh, device. And we got also Govi text here, that's the touch. And what else do we have? We have a power adapter probably for the sensor. These things will probably connect the camera and the sensor. Let's just find out. This is the first time I'm opening the box. So, yep, we got the camera. And this is the camera that goes up to the screen. But we're going to probably try to install it below of our ultra short throw projector to capture the screen. But we are going to have to remote, uh, reverse the light setup. So this is the camera. And what else do we have? This is Govi light button, smart light button, I suppose. And what do we else? What, what else do we have? We got this. So this could be, yeah, this is for calibration. You put these things on the screen of your TV around the edges and this way camera and applications application will be making the calibration but I'm going to need a uh, manual calibration because I'm going to calibrate in reverse so I'm going to install and share my experience with you in this part of the video Govi says that we have to put these uh, orange sponges around the corners of the TV but in our case this is a projector screen and with the ultra short throw we're going to apply but before that I'm going to show you how messy to set up right now because you need to do a lot of cabling and I have to apply the conversion uh, and reversely apply this because if I apply up top of my projector screen let me just go large and if I go apply to the top of it and when it moves up and down it will be problematic you can easily use it with a fixed screen instead of this rise up screen like vivid storm but the portability a good looking of it will be ruined so I will be reversely installing this sensor and one of the options that I have I can apply this two lights behind the speaker set that I got and it will be only giving light at the back of the screen. I know if I can pull the uh, speakers up front, I can create larger ambient light. So that's one of the advantages. But one of the disadvantages, I cannot put them at back because let me just show you how much distance that I got and how much the light size. And when it closes, this screen closes, 
this doesn't get in the way so that's how it is i need to apply these lights behind the speaker or otherwise i need to leave them on uh, beneath the floor kind of setup probably evolved over time and right now we have top and bottom option since i need to do it from the bottom i'm going to go for confirmed and i'm going to be choosing the stuff right now as you can see the operation it shows and let me just adjust it according my setup taking this into account this is the corner of my screen and this is probably the bottom of it i think it's not enough to capture probably whole screen because it's 92 inch it's too big but let's call it next and we can submit and it says okay by the way i'm taking the foams back some of them are falling it says version upgrade okay upgrade now upgrade no problem for me upgraded on that level it's not taking too much of a time if everything goes as planned probably i will be very happy because things got very easy comparing the first generations that i saw on the net and equipment upgrade right now is issuing and it's reconnecting Let's just wait a while. And that's it. Colors are back. Just one thing. For the movie watching Dreamview, we need to sync with the device of the camera. Let me just show you again. As you can see here is a camera icon. Otherwise, it's just FX Lab. So I'm hitting it Add. So P1 Sync Center, movie watching. That's good. As you can see, it's going to sync. It says no connection. Right now it is synced up. I'm quite happy with it. So it says part and all, as you can see, left and right. Govi installation has finished and let me just adjust the light setup. And right now it's in the brightness, brightest settings. And it looks quite a bit of good, if you ask me. It could be a little strong. Uh, for backlighting but it doesn't affect the picture quality at all as you can see I can watch like a TV and with this light setup as you can clearly see TV unit looks like a proper white so it's light enough to lit the environment and it's powerful enough of course and not to ruin the image itself does it perfectly matches the colors with the screen mmm Nah, maybe, uh, because there are some sort of issues. As you can see right in the middle, you're seeing a shadow, right? It's the shadow of the camera. Let me just get close. This is the shadow of the camera because it's very close. It has to be very, it has to be very close. Otherwise, it couldn't get the entire screen because it's a 92 inch. This is not just a regular TV. This is a 92 inch huge stuff. So this project was just to create some sort of experience. Uh, but I wasn't sure how it's going to turn out. But definitely it works. As you can see, it gives a more ambient. And we can also dim the lights down, adjust the brightness level of the lights, like the screen visual brightness. So right now this is a pretty much bright image with the Vivid Storm LR and the Ultra Short Row Xiaomi. Some of the artifacts is coming from the camera. I have to shoot HDR because of the ambient light. But just take a good look at this. Let me just go sideways and show you the picture quality on the side. It's quite a bit of good. If you apply these two lights behind the speaker unit, something like me, because you can't put it behind the uh, screen if you're not going to open it all the time. It looks quite a bit of good. Really, I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting to work it. Worked like this. And since I'm Philips Hue user for a long time, 
I can say with a bit of a tune-up, this could work quite a bit of magically for many of the projector levels. If you have a roll down screen, long throw ALR, or something like this, ultra short throw, it should work. Right now, you might be thinking, hey, the visual and the colors are not perfectly matching. This also could be an option of my miscalculation, but really, kind of like a fits. But don't forget about this. Right now, the sensor is not able to capture entire screen because screen is too big. If it wasn't 75, 85, I reckon this could easily capture entire screen. And one other problem that I had, the orange sponges, I couldn't get it on the screen because screen is uh, both expensive, I didn't want to ruin it, and it didn't stick up well because they put very, very light stickers on the behind of that sponges for uh, calibration. I'm happy with the result. Do I recommend it? I recommend it product setup if you're going to apply with the projector. So, hope to see you in the next video. Bye from Home Cinema and Tech Review.